So hi friends how was your test how was your class test was it good yes you unmute unam yes sir good okay i hope uh, it was good because uh, we have solved all the types of problems and uh, um, uh, for preparation of uh, your uh, this final insem exam the same pattern will be there i have given you all the questions all the types of questions probably which can be asked in the exam so that i have given you i hope uh, unit 2 is a bit easier because in unit 2 uh, you have got only rc rl and rlc series circuits so with these series circuits you have only two possibilities that is whether it is a source free response you have to find transient response or it may be a forced response source free response means what that uh, um, uh, supply voltage it is not connected or it is removed and a uh, forced response means you have connecting connected the uh, supply voltage or voltage source at time t equal to zero so if you are uh, knowing the initial conditions then find out the equivalent circuit at time t equal to zero and then apply kvl for that equivalent circuit and uh, you will get either a first order differential equation or second order differential equation if it is rc or rl you will get first order differential equation and if it is rlc you will get second order differential equation and you can easily solve this differential equation i have given you only one solution for all these methods so for all six you can use only one solution and you can uh, put the values of initial condition and then you can find out the um, solution for that that is transient response you will be able to find out okay so that is uh, the theory part and similarly numericals based on the this theory numericals are there and we have solved almost all the types of uh, numericals um, on that okay so um, all the lectures recorded lectures are with you uh, handwritten notes are with you and if you have got any difficulty or doubt in this first two units you can ask me at any time okay this is all about the second unit uh, in first unit we have seen the um, mesh analysis then nodal analysis so for these two we have seen all the types of problems that may be uh, mesh analysis or super mesh analysis or may be having voltage source current source and dependent sources so uh, all these types of problems we have solved so these two mesh analysis nodal analysis and four theorems Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, maximum power transfer theorem, and superposition theorem. These four, and last one is AC analysis. So, out of these four, two, six, and one, seven. So, out of seven, we have solved all the problems, possible problems for all these seven cases, and you can, uh, you in the exam there will be definitely. Uh, uh problem or numerical uh, based on these only okay so i hope you will be able to solve the final uh, insem paper also in good fashion and since it is a analytical paper you can get out of out marks so 30 out of 30 you will be able to get it provided 
you will attempt all the questions so try to attempt all the questions and try to solve all the problems so if you will practice more you will be able to solve that in the examination so don't give it up you should be always on your toes you should practice more for the numericals okay so um, uh, let us start with the third unit which we have already started two port network and uh, in two port network we have seen the z parameters and then we have to see the y parameter so y parameter also we have seen but let us continue after a, a long break of uh, two weeks we are starting that's why i want that i'll revise this y parameter and uh, then we'll move further okay so y parameter or short circuit admittance parameter so in this two port network there are two ports 1 1 dash and 2 2 dash the voltages and currents we have assumed that v1 and v2 are the voltages and i1 and i2 are the currents for both these ports 1 1 dash and 2 2 dash now for y parameters you have to express the expressions of i1 and i2 in terms of v1 and v2 so i1 should be function of v1 and v2 and i2 should be function of v1 and v2 if you will express it in this form you will be able to find the y parameters as y11 y12 y21 and y22 so as uh, i have already told you that y is nothing but it is the admittance and admittance is defined as i upon v so for all y it will be i upon v and these suffixes 1 1 it indicates this first one indicates the suffix of numerator and second uh, this uh, suffix uh, indicates suffix of the denominator so y 1 1 will give you i 1 upon v 1 at v 2 equal to 0 y 1 2 will give you i 1 upon v 2 at v 1 equal to 0 Whereas y21 will be i2 upon v1 at v2 equal to zero, and y22 will be i2 upon v2 at v1 equal to zero. So these are the simple definitions. You can express these equations in the form of matrix also. This we have seen the input um, admittance function. forward transfer uh, admittance function reverse transfer admission admittance function and output driving function driving point function uh, admittance function okay then we have seen this first numerical in how many ways you can solve these y parameters or z parameters or any two port problem you can solve by n number of ways the uh, different ways we have seen to analyze these networks in first unit so all these uh, network analysis uh, methods you can apply it here also so for um, finding this first numerical uh, find y parameters of this t network is given to you 20 30 and 40 ohms resistances connected in the form of a t so that's why it is uh, referred as t network so for this t network method 1 let us say uh, initially will assume that v1 i1 and v2 i2 are the voltages and currents at port 1 and port 2 respectively in method 1 we can find it z parameters from this network and from z parameters you can find what is the relation between z parameter and y parameter and from these relations you will be able to find y parameters so as we know we have already seen this problem so find out first z problem uh, z parameters so for finding z parameters let us take uh, these two currents mesh analysis will apply so these two mesh currents are there i1 and i2 so apply kvl for loop 1 and 2 so if you will apply kvl for these two loops 
we will find two equations of v1 and v2 in terms of i1 and i2 so this let us say these are the equations 1 and 2 so after getting these two equations you know that if the um, what are the standard equations of uh, z parameter for z parameter these standard equations are v1 and v2 expressed in the form of uh, in the as a function of i1 and i2 where the coefficient of i1 is nothing but z11 coefficient of i2 is nothing but z12 coefficient of uh, in second equation coefficient of i1 is nothing but z21 and coefficient of i2 in second equation it is nothing but z22 so comparing these two equations with that of the standard uh, z parameter equations you will get directly values of z11 z12 z21 and z22 as these okay so 60 40 40 and 70 so from these z parameters now you can find the y parameters as y11 is equal to z22 upon determinant of z whereas determinant of z you can solve it from this this is the matrix of z i have written 60 40 40 and 70 that is z11 z12 z21 and z22 now instead of this matrix i will put here a determinant sign then if you want to solve this determinant how we are solving it this a into b that is 16 into 70 minus 40 into 40 so this will be solution of the determinant so y11 you can find it by z22 upon determinant of z z22 value so all the values you can substitute from this z22 as 70 and then this determinant of z from this you will get the value of y11 as 0.02 moha this symbol is exactly 1 upon ohm is nothing but moha uh, ohm ohm is the symbol of um, impedance that is z parameter for y parameter it is 1 upon z so that is 1 upon reciprocal of ohm so ohm o h m you read it in reverse direction it will be m h o so mo it is and exactly in opposite uh, direction will be the symbol for mo then y12 it is given as minus z12 upon determinant of z so from this you can substitute the values you will get this value y21 is minus z21 upon determinant of z y22 is z11 upon determinant of z so this is method 1 with which you can solve the um, parameters y okay from z parameters now second method will use node analysis so for uh, node analysis first you have to find out how many nodes are there so yeah, only one non reference uh, junction is there or node is there and one reference junction so non reference junction now we have assumed v1 v2 are the voltages of the ports and i1 i2 are the currents of uh, of ports 1 and 2 respectively so except these v1 v2 and i1 i2 you assume other voltages and currents in the network so for this junction 1 uh, will assume yes is it audible yes am i audible sir yes sir okay fine so let us continue it was some sort of disturbance okay so
So am I audible now? Yes, Avi, Kiran. Okay, fine. So I have shared this. Uh, okay, fine. So um, uh, the second method is node analysis. So using node analysis, we'll find out the equations of uh, I1 and I2 in terms of V1 and V2 to find the Y parameters. So uh, this non-reference junction voltage, it is V3. And for reference uh, junction, it is zero volt. So that is V0 is zero volt. Now I have assumed all the currents at this junction, they are moving away uh, from the junction. This we have already seen in uh, unit number one. Okay. So let us say I3, I4 and I5 are the currents flowing through these three branches. They are moving away from this junction one. Now apply KCL at this junction one. So simply it will be summation of all the currents at that junction will be equal to zero. As all the currents we have assumed they are flowing away from that junction, that will be I3 plus I4 plus I5 equal to zero will be KCL at this junction one. Now for our task is to find values of this current I3, I4 and I5. So I3 you can find by V3 minus V1 divided by 20. Then V3, uh, I4 is V3 minus 0 upon 40. That is V3 by 40. And this I5, it is V3 minus V2 upon 30. So these values of currents you substitute here. Then you take LCM for this, it is 120. Then multiply this numerator by 6, multiply this numerator by 3, multiply this numerator by 4, and then club all the terms of V1, V2, and V3 respectively with each other. So you will get 13 V3 minus 6 V1 minus 4 V2 equal to 0. As this 120 will go on this side, it will become 0. And this is the equation. So we'll find out V3 in terms of V1 and V2 because we are interested to find equations only of V1 and V2. So equations of in terms of V1 and V2, equation of I1 and I2 in terms of V1 and V2. We won't want this V3 term. So that's why we are finding V3 equal to in terms of V1 and V2. Let us say this is equation number one. Now, we know the value of I1 and I2 from this. I1, you can find out as I1 is equal to minus of I3. You can uh, find from this branch, I1 and I3, their direction is opposite. So I1 will be equal to minus of I3. And I2 and I5, the directions are exactly opposite. So I2 will be equal to minus of I5. So I5, you know, I3, you know, I3 is V3 minus V1 by 20. So your I1 will become V1 minus V3 by 20. And I5 is V3 minus V2 by 30. So I2 will become minus of this. That is V2 minus V3 upon 30. Now, you know the value of I1 in terms of V1 and V3. You know I2 value in terms of V2 and V3. Now substitute the value of V3 from the previous equation 1. So V3 we have found out in terms of V1 and V2. So substitute this value of V3 in this equation and this equation. So that you get I1 equal to 1 by 20 V1 minus 1 by 20 into V3. V3 you substitute from equation 1. And you will get this equation as I1 is equal to 0.27 V1 minus 0.01 V2. Let us say this is equation number 2. And from this also, you will get another equation I2 equal to minus 0 0.01 V1 plus 0 0.02 V2. Let us say this is equation number 3. Now, 
this observed is equation number 2 and 3 equation 2 is i1 in terms of v1 and v2 and equation 3 is i2 in terms of v1 and v2 so these are the same as that of the standard equations of y parameter so y parameter equations are in terms of i1 and i2 you express in terms of v1 and v2 so you will get y parameter coefficients of the v1 term and v2 term in these equations will give you the y parameters so y11 you can find it out from this as 0.027 this is y11 this is y12 that is minus of 0.0154 more and from this equation coefficient this coefficient is of y21 so y21 will become minus 0.0154 more and this coefficient is nothing but your y22 so y22 will become 0.0231 more so we have compared this equation these equations with that of the standard the y parameter equations and from that we have calculated the y parameters that is second method we have used nodal analysis now in third method let us use a mesh analysis and then find out the equations again of i1 and i2 in terms of v1 and y2 and then compare it with the standard uh, equations of y parameter and we will get the values of y parameters okay so same t network i have taken this uh, two mesh currents i1 and i2 flowing in these two meshes so now i apply kvl for mesh 1 and 2 so we want to solve this numerical by mesh analysis so v1 will be you apply kvl for this so v1 will be equal to uh, 20 plus 40 into i1 so that is 60 i1 and i2 40 i2 so v1 will be equal to 60 i1 plus 40 i2 let us say this is equation 1 and v2 by applying kvl to this particular loop you will get v2 equal to 40 i1 plus 70 i2 this is second equation now you have got equation of v1 in terms of i1 i2 and v2 in terms of i1 i2 a lot of disturbance is there okay so if you will find these equations 1 and 2 so these equations you may remember that if you will compare the coefficients of this then these are the equations of z parameters that is v1 and v2 in terms of i1 and i2 so these coefficients of i1 and i2 they represent z values z parameters z11 z12 z21 and z22 okay but we want to find y parameters so we want equations of i1 and i2 in terms of v1 and v2 so for that purpose what we'll do we'll find out from this equation 2 we'll find out once the value of i1 in terms of v2 and i2 and substitute this value of i1 in equation 1 and second time we'll find out second time we'll find out the value of i2 and uh, from this equation 2 in terms of v2 and i1 and then substitute this value in equation 1 so that we get the value of i1 or equation of i1 and i2 in terms of v1 and v2 so let us take uh, from equation 2 let us first find out i2 in terms of v2 and i1 so from this equation 2 you will get i2 equal to v2 minus 40 i1 and whole divided by 70 or 1 by 70 v2 and this 40 will be on that side so minus 40 by 70 i1 now this is the value of i2 from equation 2 now substitute this in equation 1 so what you will get 
you will get the this equation v1 equal to 60 i1 plus 40 into this value of this i2 i have substituted then rearrange the equation rearrange the equation means club all the terms of i1 together and v2 together so you will get this expression as v1 equal to 0.57 v2 plus 37.14 i1 so from this you can find i1 is equal to this so this i1 v2 and v1 so v2 and v1 in terms of v2 and v1 you got the value of i1 so i1 is equal to in terms of v1 and v2 so let us say this is equation number 3 now from equation 2 again we will for we find value of i1 i1 as 1 by 40 v2 minus 70 by 40 i2 substitute this value in again equation number 1 so that you will get v1 equal to 60 into instead of i1 it will be this value now and plus 40 i2 again rearrange this equation that is club all the terms of v2 together i2 together and v1 together if uh, the terms are there and then express this equation now uh, this is the equation in terms of v1 v2 and i2 so you can express i2 in terms of v1 and v2 so this is equation number 4 now compare this equation 3 and 4 with that of the standard equations of y parameter you will find that these coefficients are nothing but y11 y12 y21 and y22 so from these we will be able to find the values of y parameters so we have found out the um, uh, y parameters from z parameters method 1 method 2 from the nodal analysis we have found out the values of y parameter third method from mesh analysis we have found out the values of y parameter now method number 4 so keeping one port as short circuit and finding y parameters using the definition that is ratio of current and voltage so first short circuit port to because we want to make v2 as zero if you will make v2 as zero you will be able to find two parameters in which v2 is zero that is y11 and y21 okay so first short circuit this port to and apply this v1 voltage here i1 current is flowing in this i2 is current flowing in this loop and v2 is zero now now apply kvl this is the simple mesh analysis now two mesh currents are there apply kvl to mesh 1 and 2 you will get equation of this v1 i1 and i2 so as v1 is equal to 60 i1 plus 40 i2 okay and for this as v2 is zero it is zero is equal to 40 i1 plus 70 i2 so these two equations are there now from this second equation you find out value of i2 in terms of i1 and put this in equation 1 and uh, second times find out value of i1 from this equation 2 and in terms of i2 and substitute it in equation 1 you will get the value of the y parameters as y11 and y21 so uh, i2 is equal to 40 minus 40 by 70 into i1 substitute this value in this so equation 1 will become v1 equal to 60 i1 minus 40 into 40 by 70 i1 so that is 31 uh, 37.143 i1 now v1 is equal to this much i1 and if you will rearrange these terms take ratio of i1 by v1 it is nothing but it is 1 by 37.143 and it is nothing but y11 so y11 is i1 by v1 at v2 equal to 0 that is 1 by 37.143 it is 0.0269 more and from equation 2 again you can find the value of i1 and uh, in terms of i2 substitute this value of i1 as minus 70 by 40 into i2 in this equation number 
so that it is v1 equal to 40 i2 minus 60 into 70 by 40 i2, so that is minus 65 i2. Now, if you will take ratio of i2 by v1, it will be minus 1 by 65, and it is nothing but y21. So y21 is equal to minus 1 by 65. It is minus 0.0154 mo. So two parameters you are able to find y11 and y21. If you will short circuit this port two, and you will apply voltage at port one. Now second case will short circuit port one so that this v1 voltage will become zero and v2 will be. Available at port two. So now apply KVL for these two meshes. Again, you will be able to find two equations in terms of V two, I two, and I one at V one equal to zero. So from these equations, you will be able to find two parameters Y one two and Y two two. So apply KVL for these two loops. You will get zero equal to sixty I one plus forty I two. And uh, V two equal to forty I one minus uh, plus seventy I two. Now, from equation one, you can find once the value of I one in terms of I two and substitute it in equation two. And second time, you find out value of I two in terms of I one and substitute in equation two. You will get both the parameters. So first, I two equal to minus sixty by forty I one, substituting it in equation two. You will get V2 equal to this minus 65 I1. That is I1 upon V2 will be minus 1 by 65. That is Y12, and it is coming out as minus 0.0154 mo. Whereas Y22, it is I2 upon V2 at V1 equal to zero, and it is coming out as 1 by 43.33 equal to 0.02 mo. So these are the four methods, and fifth method is the word simulation. So from simulation, we can simulate the circuit in uh, um, our uh, simulation softwares, uh, Tinkercad or Falstaff.com. In any one of these, you can simulate. I have simulated and given this link for you. So you can uh, put this in your browser window. You will uh, get this circuit which I have already implemented for you. So you can find here. I have used uh, two ammeters to measure I1 and I2, and two voltmeters to measure V1 and V2. I have connected one uh, voltage source of 10 volt, and once I have short circuited uh, port two, and another time I have short circuited port one. And when while short circuiting port two, I have applied voltage at port one, and while short circuiting port one, I have applied voltage at port two, and uh, noted the values of V1 and uh, V1, V2, and I1, I2 from these voltmeters and ammeters, and using these definitions of uh, Y parameters, that is I upon V, you will be able to find. The values of Y11, Y21, Y12, and Y22 parameters. So they are the same as that of we have calculated theoretically. So theoretically and practically, both the results are matching. Okay. So uh, is there uh, time left? Okay, time is.